So, Bryce, last time we talked, this was before your time on ABC's Shark Tank. So what's been going on since then? Man, ever since Shark Tank aired, it's been uh, it's been pretty hectic to say the least. So before that, the last time we talked, you know, it was just kind of an idea I had. I was, I was growing this business kind of organically, slowly, and then had the opportunity to go on to the show. I did a walk-in audition and got selected, and it was a long process after that. And uh, it, it's been the real deal, man. Ever since we aired on TV, we've had tons of orders, tons of people inquiring about the product. And it's just, it's been phenomenal. You know, we're backed up on orders and product. I, I need my friends to come over and help me out now. And so it's been tremendous, the amount of uh, support we received and everybody seems to enjoy the products. So that's the best part. Cool. So since the show aired, uh, did your orders go through the roof on your website? Yeah, they really did. I mean, judging from where we were to where we were after the show, I mean, it was it was a big increase, you know, we weren't really ready for it in a sense, but I mean, uh, we've done the best we can to keep up and it's been tremendous, like the amount of people that are actually intrigued by the product and really want to try it out because they kind of believe in it before they've even tried it. So, you know, we did a first wave of shipments and everybody that's got the product is just emailing back saying, man, you weren't kidding, this stuff is awesome. So that gives me like a little more desire to keep it going and just keep pushing and keep pushing. So it's a lot of hard work, but uh, we're keeping up and I think it's a, a success story to come. <laughs> cool. So when people were making their orders, like you said, some of them were getting back to you as far as how good the product was. Did you get any negative feedback that made you want to maybe <coughs> change your, your method of, of creating soap or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, that's a good question because everybody always asks about the positive, but they never really hear about the negative side of things that you have. So there's a lot of things we had to worry about like on the website the night of. I mean, there's millions of viewers going to the website, so we had to make sure the website didn't crash and the, the shopping cart was good to go to make sure that didn't crash either. And then on top of that, I mean, we shipped some product and we had a couple cases where some of the product actually opened in shipment. So it actually just kind of exploded and we had some had some problems, you know? And these are kind of things you don't really foresee, but they do happen. So we understand a customer's concern. So if they, if they email and say, hey, we had a problem, you know, I was happy to fix it because I mean, that's what we do. We want them to get other product and get a quality product. Right. So I think for anyone that watched the show that night, uh, there's the four judges or investors, if you will, yep. um, three of them kind of gave you no's, but the last one, she she was, she was seemed extremely interested in the product. Um, talk about what's been going on since uh, she got involved. Yeah, there's a lot I've learned just since the airing on Shark Tank. I mean, it happened months before it even aired on television too, so there was a lot of things happening before it aired. Um, but a lot of the investors, you know, at the time, they, they had a valid point that I wasn't really a business. You know, I had a product, I had a good idea, but I wasn't a full-blown company with employees. And so for them to kind of come in, it was a bigger risk because they had to put in so much more time and effort and kind of put everything, you know, make sure everything functioned the way it was supposed to. So the last couple months, that's kind of what I've been working on is making sure we have a legitimate business with the people we need on the back end to fulfill the, the orders and, you know, our shipping supplies and everything above. And um, ever since Lori came on board, you know, it's just, it's been amazing the amount of advice and she's given me because, you know, for the longest time I thought I'd be working with her team and never really get to speak with her, but you speak with her directly, she'll, she'll call you, text you, email, whatever it needs to be. Um, you just kind of keep it short and concise and business related. And so she's been able to give me honest feedback and it, it's been great, you know, give me a direction to go. Mm -hmm. So how nervous were you when it, when, <laughs> when it came down to her being the last yes or no that you were gonna get. It was heart-wrenching in a sense. I mean, I've done a lot of high-end events, I guess you could say. I've done X Games and some other TV coverage, and you know, I've, I've been kind of nervous in those things, but I'm riding my motorcycle, so I'm in my element, and going to Shark Tank, dude, it was completely out of the blue. It was out of my element, no helmet on, no goggles to hide behind, and you had to be smart. You kind of had to know what you were talking about, so. Going in there, I was definitely the most scared I've ever been in my life, surprisingly, but w once we started talking, the, ease, the, the nerves wore off, and um, it was hectic coming out of the last moment. You know, everybody was out, and Lori was on the fence about it, but she had some good points that the product fits into her portfolio of other products that she does have. She sells to a lot of retailers that would carry this product, mm -hmm. and so I think it's a good fit for her, so I think, um, I think it could work out. Cool. So, I think a lot of people that have seen the show maybe even people that haven't seen the show might have it in their heads that these investors come in and just kind of take over everything they just they, they put you in their back pocket whenever they need you but essentially they run the show is that really the case 
So that's a really good question too. It's kind of a misconception that people think when you go on Shark Tank, you pitch your idea, you get an investment that you just kind of get to sit on the sideline and collect a check and these people run your company, but that's not really the case. I mean, they're wealthy individuals and they're very busy individuals, especially with the TV show. So they don't really have the time to sit there and hold your hand, but if you have critical, important questions to ask, then yeah, they could definitely answer them and answer them in a way that you won't really get from anybody else because they've been there, done that. Um, so that's that's been tremendous, but at the same time, it is my company and it's like everything falls back on me in the long run. If it doesn't succeed, you know it's my fault in the, at the end of the day. And there's a lot of work that I have to do. I gotta do all the slave labor, you know? I mean, I don't expect them to come in my garage in here and pack bottles with me. That's, that's outrageous. So it's still a tremendous amount of work, but to get that initial capital investment to be able to fund all these things, that's the important part and that's where they really come in. So ultimately, you're still creating this product 100% handmade. You're you're packaging everything yourself, correct? Everything is still all on you? At the moment, yeah. You know, I did all the formulation on the product, so I really know how to make the product and what actually makes a good quality product when it comes to what ingredients we use and just even how to package it. So we have a, uh, a manufacturer lined up, but I mean, what people don't realize in business is things like that take time. They don't just manufacture 10,000 units next week. You know, you gotta do, you gotta get samples, you gotta do stability testing, make sure no mold growth and everything like that. So we're still about 12 weeks out from a, a manufacturer production run, uh, but in that 12 weeks, we really don't wanna keep our customers waiting. So we're gonna continue making the product one bottle at, at a time and uh, hand by hand and call it good. <laughs> so this is essentially your workshop in here, correct? Yeah, as you can see, this is, this is the workshop. It's not much, you guys don't get a whole picture here. But um, we have everything, you know, we, we fill the product here in these jugs, which it'll have to uh, sit for a couple days actually to finish its chemical formulation. And then uh, we package everything with the machine in the back, every single individual bottle, we label everything and ship it. So it truly is a, uh, a handmade product. Okay, so now that you, 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 you got new labels and everything, just as I got here this morning, Yeah. You don't put those on yourself, right? You have them sent out to a third party to do that? We've been doing labels ourselves, but we just got some new labels, like you said, some shrink sleeve labels. And um, yeah, we'll send that out to a third party co-packer so they can uh, run it through their heat tunnel to, to shrink it. So that kind of goes back to the same problem when we had bottles opening and shipment. Well, we got some new labels that cover the caps, it seals it, so now we don't have to deal with any leaks or anything. So that's just stuff you learn along the way. It's a problem. It's, you know, it, some people throw their hands up, but it's just something you, you overcome. So, since the uh, since the Shark Tank investor came on board with you, have you and her? I mean, you 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 two clearly come from two different worlds. <laughs> yeah. Have you two kind of butt heads or anything like that at all? You know, like what's what's your guys's relationship as of right now? <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting how it works out after the show because, uh, like you said, the investor. I mean, no offense, she's a woman. She comes from a different demographic and. I'm a male, I ride motorcycles, I kind of know who we're appealing to. So we kind of both have some different ideas and decisions on who we want to appeal to in our demographic. And so, yeah, we do butt heads, you know, in a sense that she wants to go one way and I want to go another way. And she might really, she kind of wants to turn and burn the product. She wants to put it out there quick, get it everywhere it needs to be. And then, you know, hopefully it sells in a sense. But I, I kind of want to grow it a little more slowly and organically and keep the product quality there. Because to me, that's the most important thing that if, if the product doesn't work like it's supposed to, then nobody's gonna buy it, or nobody's gonna buy it again at least. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's that's kind of the number one, and that's kind of where we, you know, we do butt heads a little bit, but something we're working on, and uh, you know, like I said, they're smart. They, I take all their criticism, you know, to heart, and yeah. and I learn from everything from it. So where it stands right now, you know, we're, we're business partners, but we're not sure where it's gonna go exactly. We might part our separate ways. We haven't necessarily decided yet. Um, we're just kind of waiting to see how sales plug along the next couple couple months, and. You know, I don't, want to, I don't want to say we're not partners, but I don't want to say we are partners. We're kind of in a weird transition stage, so I'll, I'll kind of leave it at that for now. <laughs> okay. Um, so, let's talk about your riding now. Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's been going on? Anything new? As far as riding motorcycles goes, man, I, I did get a new bike. I got a 2016 Cowie 450, and I've been riding it a little bit. I love the thing. It's a great bike, but it's tough because juggling between the whole business side of thing and riding, it's, it's tough because Riding really requires your full attention because if you aren't practicing on your bike and you aren't up to par with your skills and your hand-eye coordination and training, then you can get seriously hurt on a motorcycle. It's not a joke. You can't just jump on it and think you can do the same things you did months ago. So 
it's important to practice, but at the same time, it's important to upkeep my business. I'm, I have customers waiting on product and whatnot, so it really is a tough balance, you know, but I set time aside, you know, to ride. I, I still keep sponsors happy. We have a lot of events we have to do this year, some freestyle shows, obviously X game step up we want to do. And so it, it's a tough battle, but it's exciting. It just makes you work a little bit harder and cram your schedule a little bit tighter. As you said, it's, it's hard juggling, you know, basically two careers. Yeah. I mean, this grip clean is your startup career. Moto has been, uh, freestyle moto has been your, been your paying career for years now. Mm -hmm. Do you ever come across days where you just don't know what direction to go? <laughs> Pretty much every single day you have that tough juggler. What, what do you do? You know, but soap obviously has a little bit longer of a, a career for me, I think in the future and has a better, a better light at the end of the tunnel. But motorcycles, like you said, has been my bread and butter. It's paid my bills for the last five years of my life and I'm forever grateful for it. But as we all kind of know, the motorcycle industry, especially freestyle motocross, has taken a hit the last couple of years. And the amount of events is kind of dwindling down. And uh, the tricks are getting gnarlier and gnarlier. And I, I honestly can't afford to sprain my foot anymore and then not be able to walk around my warehouse and package soap. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a tough battle, but I mean, I still love riding motorcycles. I still love putting on a good show. It's what I do. So like I said, we got events we need to, we need to show up to this year and, and do well at. And that still has a... Uh, a significant part in my heart with motorcycles, so I don't, I'll never give that up for sure. Okay, so essentially freestyle motocross is kind of crapped out over the years. It's it's almost non-existent anymore. There's only a couple contests these days. Um, where do you get your money from freestyle motocross? I mean, I know you do demos. Is that really the only place that you can get? Yeah, it now? demos for me is mainly my, like I said, the bread and butter. You do some county fairs and exhibitions, some parking lot demos and stuff like that. But I mean, as we all know, freestyle's taken a hit the last couple years, but honestly, no one's really stood up and kind of said how bad of a hit it's really gotten. And it's gotten pretty bad. You know, Red Bull X Fighters is now diminished. They have one stop every year. Nitro Circus is a good tour, which is going on, but you're only hiring. I mean, there's probably eight riders on there out of the whole entire world that they're given a solid career. Um, X Games not having freestyle last year was a big hit and just a lot of promoters losing losing their ramps, no events, there's just not much money in the corporate world going on to support that and so I think a lot of people haven't really stood up and like admitted the fact that there's no work there but it's, it's, it's there, it's a true fact and it's just, it's life. So you can either try to scrounge up some events here and there and make it happen or I can kind of put my time elsewhere to where it's going to make me more money really. Is that kind of what you have to do now? You kind of have to hustle yourself to, to get into some demos? And yeah, stuff? You, you really got to sell yourself on demos. It's mm -hmm. kind of interesting where it's gone the last couple of years because it used to be, I mean, no offense, but it was the Metal Militia era where everyone partied, show up late to the demo, hung over, just ride, whatever. But in that, now promoters don't really want to deal with that crap. They want somebody that's going to show up on time, put on a good show, interact with the fans, sign some autographs. You know, put on a good image and it, it's easier for them. It's less hassle. They don't have to worry about someone being late, not showing up, missing their flights. So it's, it's really turn, took a turn to like more business savvy for people, you know? So I get it. Under, I understand now kind of running my own business, how a promoter wants something to run. You know, it's, it's less work for them to have to do and less hassle for them to have to deal with. Right. So as you and I were talking about a few minutes ago, you, you just got yourself a warehouse. This yeah. For grip clean. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting news. We haven't really announced that yet, but it's been uh, it's been great because, like you can see here, we're here in the garage and it it's just not working out anymore. You know, I mean, it's been it's been a great start for sure, but you can't run a big business out of a garage. You just can't physically. So we need to we need to up our equipment and our manufacturing and facility and everything like that. And so I think that's going to help grow the business tremendously and give us some more incentive to go out and sell some more product. And I'm very excited to move in. We'll have to get some more shots. Definitely. Do you feel this is like a pretty big step for you with the whole grip clean thing? Yeah, it really is. It's, I've been nervous about getting a warehouse because I mean, it's not cheap. It's not the most expensive thing in the world, but I mean, I'm a tightwad. I'm a young kid. I like to save my money, honestly. So it's, it's hard to do, but it is a big step. And honestly, I've, I've also never really been this excited about something in a long time. Like I got my new dirt bike. That was cool, but I'm almost more excited to move into a warehouse, which is funny. So <laughs> it's interesting to see how things pan out, but yeah. I think my new bike will look good in that warehouse too. Definitely. So as you can see, we have about uh, nine 55 gallon drums that we mix our product out of. Uh, we got three of them open here, just so you guys can see exactly, exactly how it kind of looks when it goes together. Um, after we mix it in there, we'll usually hook a tube up from our filling machine back here. It'll hook up straight to there, direct draw, and then you just kind of fill one bottle at a time, yada, yada, yada. 
Then, uh, then you usually come along the back side. We've got all our shipping boxes and supplies, and this usually we'll kind of pack our orders. We'll put our box together, put our stickers in there, some thank you cards, some sample bottles, and then it's uh, out the door. So we got boxes on boxes. These are all shipping boxes that need to go out. It's all product that's already sold, so we're a little backed up, but it's coming. <laughs> it's working. We're going to go to work as soon as that camera shuts off.